motion. We, first of all, would like to thank uh, the people of Papua New Guinea for following through. Uh, we have made a commitment to the people of Papua New Guinea and our supporters, our family members, and our friends that uh, we will push through with the VONC until we get it correct. And so we've got it corrected. The much anticipated uh, progress has come true and uh, we have successfully brought in a vote of no confidence on the floor of parliament. The result may be disappointing uh, for a lot of us, but we can say that uh, we are encouraged to see that the whole opposition was intact today and voted against, uh, against voted for the vote of uh, VONC. And so let me first of all thank the whole opposition leadership, the former prime ministers, former deputy prime ministers, the governors, the seniors, everybody in the opposition leadership. I want to thank you all, the deputy opposition leader for leadership that uh, we have brought in the VONC. Though we uh, lost, but we are encouraged and we want to tell our people of Papua New Guinea that this is not the end. We'll regroup, we'll strengthen our portion, and you'll see us again. But uh, today has demonstrated that when the Prime Minister came in after the elections, he was voted in by 104 members of parliament. Today, the Prime Minister has lost one third of that number. And take note of that. That is, this time around, he only mustered 75 votes. And that gives us encouragement that we are doing the right thing. You heard on the floor of parliament, we emphasized <coughs> through the speakers, uh, myself and the alternate prime minister, that the country currently is going through a lot of struggle. And I cannot emphasize more further on this. We all know the country struggles. And Prime Minister cannot continue to tell lies to the people of Papua New Guinea with this treasure. The reason why we brought in the yeah. vote of no confidence is because we know the country is going through a lot of struggle. And they are lying. And he bluntly continued to tell lies on the floor of Parliament. Continue. And for our leaders from the opposition to take point of, of orders after point of orders to get things corrected on the floor of parliament so that Papua New Guinea, the floor of parliament, gets a fair representation through this uh, opposition team. And so I am somewhat, people may say I'm disappointed. I'm actually not disappointed. I'm encouraged yes. yeah. with a team that we have yeah, 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 yeah. that we will go back, regroup, get things corrected, get things done properly. We will continue to uh, talk to our friends on the other side. And we have seen a lot of disappointed members on the, the other side today. There were a lot of smiles in the past. Today, I did not see any smile on the other side, <laughs> but disappointed leaders. And so we have to get some people responsible for their actions. And as we regroup, as we get together, this evening for dinner and in our meetings, we'll be discussing some possibilities. One of the possibilities that we'll be discussing is why urgent parliament to November? When there are a lot of businesses, parliament business that needs to be discussed. Prime Minister himself said, you must listen to law politics and concentrate on uh, important matters for the nation. And here, you have urgent parliament for another two to three months. Why? When Parliament can continue its business today, tomorrow, for the next two weeks. But we accept that and uh, we'll get back, uh, organize ourselves. And uh, you can see the, the opposition is together. I know some of you journalists have been calling me and asking me, is this member moving over to the government? I told you guys, no, we are strong opposition. Today we have demonstrated this. We have demonstrated that we are this opposition. The full 34 of us are 
together. Today, uh, 32 of us voted. Two are unwell, and they're not with us. But we are confident of our numbers, and our numbers will stand together for today, tomorrow, and for the future. Um, as you witnessed today in Parliament, there was a heated debate over whether or not the motion of vote of no confidence should be debated. And from the opposition's point of view, it was a, our view that it was a constitutional right for debate on the floor of Parliament. Now, the Speaker, without understanding where he got his reasoning from, from the two clerks that were supposed to assist him, and you did note that during that debate, I made reference to a number of Supreme Court rulings. One was in 2016, uh, the case between Polia and, and then the Speaker Zurnok, where the court made a declaration, Supreme Court, of the former Chief Justice, current Chief Justice, and three other members, where in order to, it says the declaration that the actions of the acting Speaker of Parliament and Chairman of the Committee on the Private Business in preventing the debate of a uh, no confidence motion lodged then on the 7th of June 2016 by the parliamentary uh, by Parliament is contrary to the principle of responsible government enshrined in sections 141, 142 subsection 5a and section 144 of the Constitution and is illegal. So that was the court's own ruling concerning the rights of members to debate votes of no confidence. Unfortunately, today we were misled by the speaker or the speaker himself was misled and he was repeatedly reminded on the floor of parliament. The section 23 of the constitution provides that any individual that deliberately defies a constitutional responsibility and obligation is a crime, either a fine of 10,000 kina or imprisonment, I believe up to five years, or 10,000 kina fine and an imprisonment of five years. So now it's a point of discussion on whether to bring proceedings against the Speaker and the two clerks for misleading Parliament and denying debate a constitutional right of all members of Parliament. Thank you. I'll have a... I think it's really important that we, we clarify uh, an ero erroneous statement that was made by the Prime Minister on the floor of Parliament. When we have the Prime Minister and some of his ministers harping on, that the opposition is preventing them from performing and carrying out their functions as ministers of state and from doing their work as the government, this is a total lie. So this just comes back to the point that we've called out the Honourable Prime Minister for appointing the worst ministers to become ministers of cabinet. You need to have people who are educated, people who speak English, people who understand how things work, holding on to these very, very important ministries, especially the economic ministries, mm. like finance, like commerce and industry. This is why we're saying that we're getting a raw deal under the Honorable James Morape. And this can't be allowed to continue. So you can't sit there and then say, oh, the opposition's impeding socioeconomic indicators here. We're impeding government performance. We don't get any funding. In the budget, the, the opposition doesn't get any funding. So we're here, we're making a call that law and orders fail, that the health, health sector has absolutely failed, that education has failed, that we have a youth bulge issue in the country that there's absolutely no solution for. Unemployment is through the roof, and you've got all these economic indicators that are just regressing, they're going downhill. Cost of living crisis, inflation. People can't afford to buy tin fish and rice. Now, this in any other democracy would have compelled a prime minister that's for the people to resign. <clears throat> Law and order out of control. Sure. He would have resigned. So we have to judge a prime minister based on his the content of his character. Is what is happening here just and fair? Is it honest? Is he, is he, is he maintaining his integrity? The answer is a complete no. So we've got to stop the charade and Papua New Guinea has got to just, 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 just not accept this facade that's been propagated here by James Marape and, uh, and his Pangu cohorts. It's not good enough. And that's the call. And we stand by that call because things will not improve. Everything that's failing here is because of weak leadership. He's indecisive. 
He can't make the tough calls. And you have to judge them, judge the prime minister by his cabinet. Who is he appointed to be around him to control how the country works? That's the first test, the litmus test. Is he able to take any responsibility for his actions and his decisions? Pogara. He made a decision to shut down an operating mine. Why are we in this mess? Why are we having this FX crisis? <clears throat> is he able to take responsibility, responsibility for that decision that he made? Four years on, Pogara is still not functioning in full operation. We've got all these issues of law and order in Pogara. Have you seen the illegal miners in Pogara? Why are we lying to the people of Papua New Guinea? These lies have to stop. So I just want to encourage everybody that the opposition has nothing to do with the government's performance. If ministers can't perform whilst there's a VONC happening or whilst the opposition is doing their job and holding them to account, then you're completely incompetent. You should tender your resignation. Yeah, no. We should stop the raw deal that we're giving to the people of Papua New Guinea. And this is the message. So today was round one of the VONC and round two will come because we can't allow this to continue. Yeah, no. We are going to fast become a banana republic and we won't have a country if this continues. This is how serious it is. So thank you. Fisheries, forest, all these plants and talk about downstream processing again and again. Talking about opening this project, this. But Prime Minister has made so many announcements and we are yet to see one uh, announcement come to fruition. And so Prime Minister has to stop talking about new plans, new programs, and begin to fulfill some of the promises that he's made in the last four to five years. Stop lying here. Huh? In a plogiaman. In a plogiaman. And so our call to the Prime Minister is in a plogiaman, new plotokto, in a and put your feet down and start to make things happen for the country. Thank you. Thank you very much.